Hello everybody, today we're going to be unboxing this package. I actually don't know what's in here, and I don't really even know where it came from, to be honest, but it looks like there's a cube in there, and uh, but you already know, because the title's up here, because I'll be, f you know, titling it after I already know, so. Uh, I did order a Wit Long 3x3 from Wit Eden, but I also ordered one from HK Now Store. This doesn't look like HK Now Store packaging, uh, but I've ordered some stuff from other places too, so I'm, I'm guessing this is a uh, Wit Long from Wit Eden, so let's open it up. Okay, so here we have some stickers. It doesn't really look like they're cut, or maybe I just can't see it. Oh yeah, they're cut. And here we have the cube itself. And I am right, this is the Wit Long Cube from what I've seen on the internet. And here's the box. Let's take a look at what the box looks like. Of course, there's the Wit Eden logo right here. So let's get on to the cube itself and take a look at some of the pieces because I heard that this is a very original mechanism. This isn't a knockoff of any kind. This is like a brand new mechanism and apparently it's impossible to pop. And uh, wow, look at all of these pieces for a three by three. Holy, I wonder if there's any doubles in here. I don't know. So we got one standard core. I can see I should probably shave some stuff off of that. And we got our center caps. They just look like standard center caps. Uh, here's our edge pieces. Let's see, they go together just like this, I guess. Does anything go in them? I don't see anything that might go in them as far as torpedoes go. I think that's exactly, that's all it is right there. And uh, I think that this here acts as a torpedo itself. So yeah, that's it, that's one edge piece. So from what I've seen online, these corner pieces, it takes three of them and uh, you fit them together sort of like you do on the Diane pieces. Oh yeah, I see how, how that works now. Let's see if I can fit this last piece in here. How does it go? There we go. So that is a corner piece. That's very interesting. Let's see how that matches up with the edge piece. Yeah, so you can see that the edge piece and the corner piece sit together. That's cool. And here's a center piece like this, and I guess the cap fits on there just like that. And we have these weird looking pieces too. They're like these little dome pieces. And I guess those go right underneath it. And maybe the edge piece might sit like that, I guess. And so that's how it would sit. This uh, dome piece would catch that edge and act sort of like the torpedo on a Dion cube. But it's different, you know, that's, I'm quite interested to see how this will turn out. So there's all the pieces. I am gonna go and assemble everything right now and uh, I will get back to you in a little bit and let you know how the cube performs. Okay, so now I've assembled and stickered the cube and I've lubed it and tensioned it the way I like it and I've had it for about 24 hours. So I can give you a bit of a review on it, but this is still kind of first impressions. However, I don't see my impression on it uh, moving that much. So let's go over the pros and cons of this cube. Let's go to the pros first. Uh, the corner cutting. The corner cutting ability is great. Uh, everybody seems to be really obsessed with having a cube that can cut 45 degrees and this one can cut 45 degrees no problem let's try a little bit further than 45 not really it locks up my cube is actually tensioned pretty tight uh, when I had it a little bit looser um, it could cut actually way farther than 45 degrees and if it didn't it would just go the other way uh, I do like my cubes a little bit tighter these days. It forces me to be more accurate, so I don't actually have to rely on corner cutting that much. And everybody seems to be, you know, so concerned with how far a cube can corner cut it. I mean, really take a look at your solving. Do you really need a cube that can cut 45 degrees? If it's there, that's really awesome, but it's definitely not needed. Now let's take a look at the um, reverse corner cutting. So let's go halfway through to the middle piece here, and that's I mean, I don't even have to try. I mean, it just moves by itself. It's that easy. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go about three quarters of the way. No problem. Let's go almost all the way. No problem. So this actually cuts corners a lot better than a Diane cube does, in my opinion. So uh, it's actually pretty light as well. Um, I don't know how I feel about the weight. It, it almost feels like very airy, like there's not much to it. Um, it's a little bit grindy as well. I'm sure somebody at some point will come up with a mod to make it super smooth like Lubix cubes or something like that. Who knows, it might be me or it might be you. 
Um, so some more pros of this cube is uh, the turning. It, it turns actually really well, De you know, despite the grinding, it's, it's super smooth. Like, I don't know, I use Lubix though and most of the cubes that I have turn really well because I lube them properly. I lube the core on this, I lubed all the, um, the contact points to uh, reduce the friction. Um, so let's talk a bit about the stickers now. Uh, the stickers don't quite fit there. I mean, they're not, they're definitely not as big as Cubesmith stickers, as you can see on this cube here. Uh, this is my uh, Zanchi, that's a Zanchi, yep. And you can see that the stickers are more rounded than Cubesmiths and they are um, not quite as big. So you can see that there's more black border in between the stickers on this cube. I don't actually mind that too much, but I definitely am not a fan of the color. The stickers you can see, I don't know, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but you can see right through to the black on a lot of the sides. Um, so they're really, really thin. Uh, they seem to be, I don't know, I guess stretchy, you know, like on some stickers they'll chip and some will kind of stretch before they tear. And that's sort of like this one. Um, whereas Cubesmith stickers are a bit of both and they're very, very durable and thick. Uh, whereas these ones, they seem cheaply made and these stickers, um, you know, where they're laid out on the sheet, it seemed to just be randomly cut and not very well stamped. Uh, I, I could not use transfer tape on them. Um, but, you know, the stickers, the colors themselves also seem a little bland to me, like this orange. It just kind of seems bland, like there's not, it's not bright. But keep in mind that uh, I do use half bright stickers, which means that my orange is actually considerably brighter. And uh, it might just be tricking me, and this might be a regular orange, but I find it a little bit bland. Um, the blue I actually don't mind. It's sort of like a lighter blue than your typical uh, color. I'll show you a checker pattern really quick. So you can see the contrast. It's actually very distinguishable between this and uh, with the red and orange, it's distinguishable as well. I mean, when you do a checker pattern like this, you can really see how the colors complement or don't complement each other. So I'm gonna let you make your mind up about this uh, color scheme and the shades of the stickers, but I personally don't really like them too much. I will be replacing them with Cubesmith stickers. They seem cheap and uh, sort of dull pastel-y colors to me. I don't know, what do you think? So let's do a size comparison now. Uh, this is just a regular size Zanchi, and they're exactly the same size. I've never actually compared the size myself yet. So it's the same size as a regular Zanchi. Now one of the other cons about this is that it does lock up, and it's due to the pieces. It's a mechanism, uh, I guess it wouldn't be a failure, but it's definitely um, something that they didn't really look into, I guess. Um, they, so they spent so much time making it unpoppable and corner cutting is great and it is unpoppable by the way I know a lot of people have heard the rumor that it's unpoppable and I have tried my hardest to pop this cube and it just it will not pop the way that the mechanism is when I was building it I could see that this is going to be an unpoppable cube and I really really like that factor because even on my Zanchi sometimes with the torpedoes sometimes I pop a piece and uh, with this one it just doesn't happen ever and uh, I really, really like that feature. But the cube does lock up on me quite a bit, and believe it or not, it's these corner pieces locking up on the center pieces, and I know that sounds really weird, but I'm gonna explain why. Now, if we, co if we reverse corner cut, that's no problem, because we're forcing it, but a lot of the time, they get snagged on each other, and there's some room, just like that. It'll get snagged just like that. And when you're in the middle of an algorithm, I don't know about you, but when I'm doing my algorithms, it's mostly muscle memory and I don't know how to do them very slow. So when I'm doing it, I'm in the middle of an algorithm and it locks up, I kind of lose my place because I'm not sitting there saying, you know, R, U, R prime in my head. I'm just going with the flow. And then sometimes it does, it wrecks my algorithm because the lockups can be pretty bad sometimes. Um, but it's, it's weird that it would lock up because if it can corner cut so well, you would think it would just snap. But sometimes it just gets caught like that. And uh, it's it actually happens quite a bit. One really cool thing about the ease of the reverse corner cutting is that if you were to do an F move in the middle of your solving or an algorithm like that, and your U just happens to be prime a little bit, and it's easy, you can still do your F move. It will still cut very, very easily. Or if your uh, U slice is a little bit over, like this, it still cuts. So you're, I don't know, like a lot of cubes will lock up if you're over like that on your F turns or your U's are a bit out. Um, but this one doesn't do that. But this one does lock up a bit 
on the corners and the centers a little bit, which is sort of like a trade-off, I would guess. I, I basically get the same times as uh, my Zanshi now. And uh, I've been using Zanshi for quite a while, and it's my main cube. I, I love it. I like it more than this, I'll tell you that. But this one does have potential for sure. Um, I am getting sub-20 averages of 5 now because I've been practicing for a few days since my uh, average of 12 I just uploaded. Um, now, or sorry, I'm getting sub-20 averages of 12 now. So I think on my next average of 12 video that I'm going to upload, I will use this. So you can really see the lockup problems on it. Um, or maybe it won't happen because I'm getting used to the cube. And when you start getting used to a cube, you stop, you know... Um, locking it up so much if it's a locky cube like my Sheng Xiao 4x4 it's a locky cube but I don't lock it anymore because I've learned to deal with it and uh, that just came subconsciously because I don't want it to happen so I'll you know start solving in a, in a, in a manner that doesn't allow it to happen um, algorithms on this flow actually pretty smooth um, I gotta say oh I just wrecked my algorithm there what did I do oh now I'm just doing wrong stuff yeah, as you can see, the algorithms are actually pretty fast on this. So now I guess I'll do a solve just for you guys to see. Maybe it'll lock up on me so you can see what I'm talking about. Although, like I said, it's not happening so much now. And either the cube is breaking in or I'm just learning to deal with it. And I don't think I've had it long enough to break in and the plastic to wear down enough to stop that lock up. So we'll see. I'm not going to time this. I'm just going to go. All right. What am I doing? You guys ever talk to yourself while you cube? I think I brought this up before. I do it all the time. I ask myself, what are you doing, Dan? You're, uh, you're making mistakes. I gotta find a better Superman perm. I don't really like the one I have. Oh, there we go. It locked up in the back there. And that's what I mean. It can really screw you up in your algorithm. So now I'm gonna show you exactly why it locks up. Just take this piece out, it comes out pretty easy. And you can see that the corner here is hollow, right? So it's three pieces that come apart. I can't take it apart now, but the, they're hollow in here. And what's happening is on this little ridge, you can see that it comes in and then there's a little ridge right there. And that's what the center catches on. It catches on that sharp part and snags it. So I think what we can do is just shave that round and that might stop that from happening. I'm not sure. I'll try it. So now I'll continue to take this whole layer off and uh, show you exactly what it looks like. So we're going to pop the center cap off first and then we're going to unscrew the entire top layer because this is how you kind of have to uh, take it apart and put it back together. Okay, so now I'm taking this off and uh, now we got to grip the whole top and snap it off. So now you can really see the mechanism on the inside. These pieces are all stuck together um, using, I, somebody referred to it as sort of the Sheng Shao 6x6 and thought it was a knockoff. It's not a knockoff, that's for sure. But um, it definitely utilizes the same kind of technique. And this is what it looks like on the bottom part. And I don't want to take it apart right now, but um, I'm going to make an assembly video of this when I get my second one. And uh, you guys can really see the mechanism then. Okay, so overall, what do I think about this cube? I think it has the potential to be a, a great speed cube if you can get used to the feeling. If you like an Alpha 5, I guarantee that you'll like this. Or an Alpha CC, I heard, also has the same crispy kind of feel to it. Um, it's definitely very fast. I can get the same times on this than I can with this because this locks up a little bit in one way and this one doesn't and then this one locks up in a little bit of one way that this one doesn't and uh, but yeah I can get the same kind of times I can't wait to get some more half brights to throw it on this and uh, then I'll do an average of 12 with this so all right guys I uh, kind of recommend that you check this puzzle out it is definitely great at least for your collection if you don't like it thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video all right, everybody, this video's question comes from Mr. Crazy Madwood, who asks, what would you do for a Klondike bar? Leave your creative responses below. I also want you to ask a question that might be picked for next week. And last week's question was, what do your initials stand for besides your name? And here are some of your answers. So yeah, overall, I would say that this cube is a little, um, bah. So I guess I'll just give it a scramble now. Oh yeah, there's a lot up. Bah. So I've got it stickered and disassembled now. I mean, assembled. Ugh. 
And I gotta say, this cube is... Uh, 